If you're like me and you're sick and tired of the kitty adventure of Omega and the Bad Batch that makes up most of season one and the first two episodes of season two, the good news is this third episode was made for adult fans. Episode three, titled A Solitary Clone, is a welcome return to form for the clones minus the Jedi. But the story also gets the added elements of distrust, fear, and discomfort due to, well, in a way, the lack of Jedi. This is the first time since episode one of the first season that I think the emotional impact on the clones from Order 66, as well as the added weight of being replaced after their dedicated service during the war has been seen. And we learn about all this from a fan favorite character, Commander Cody. The episode opens on the planet Desix, which broke away from the Republic before the war, before joining the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Imperial Governor Groton is sent to replace the current governor with a squad of conscripted troopers rather than clones. They set down on the planet, and Groton announces his intent to replace Governor Tani Amis and bring peace and order to the planet. Tani refuses and declares that Desix is still an independent planet outside Imperial control. Groton's men draw their weapons, only to be surrounded by battle droids, which Desix seems to have kept from their time as a Separatist ally and reprogram them to fight what Tani saw as the coming Imperial occupation. Tani takes Groton and his troops hostage, serving as the impetus for a reunion between Crosshair and Commander Cody. We get our first look at Coruscant since the Clone Wars, where the clones are now stationed after the destruction of Kamino. Crosshair did indeed survive, for those who were wondering, and I am still left wondering why he didn't report the survival of the Bad Batch to Vice Admiral Rampart. Crosshair is seen eating lunch alone because nobody likes him and he no longer has his fellow defective clone brothers to hang out with. He gets summoned to Vice Admiral Rampart's office, who clears him for active duty, and we learn that Crosshair was stranded on Kamino for 32 rotations which from what I gather is equal to 32 days. Rampart has decided to reward Crosshair's loyalty to the Empire with a new mission, but because he failed so many times as a leader, he will be working under someone else. Crosshair meets Cody at the Clone War Memorial, which I believe is a new addition. He's surprised to see Cody, especially because Cody is wearing a new set of armor. They talk briefly about Order 66, how more and more clones seem to be questioning the Empire and turning traitor, which prompts Crosshair to mention the Jedi. Cody looks extremely uncomfortable after hearing the word, but then flippantly states, good soldiers follow orders, which elicits a cynical look from Crosshair. Cody, Crosshair, and their squad fly to the planet Desix, and upon entry are immediately bombarded by the droid army, who holding nothing back, damage the ship, causing them to crash land. Of course, the ship doesn't explode due to plot armor, and only two clones die. Next, the group has to infiltrate the Separatist stronghold, but their way is blocked by a tank. This doesn't phase Crosshair. The tank is firing at him, narrowly missing multiple times, and Crosshair doesn't even flinch. He then sinks a shot right down the barrel, which is pretty cool. The clones infiltrate the stronghold, coming face to face with regular battle droids, droidicas, and commando droids, which Crosshair figures are being commanded by a tactical droid from the highest tower in the stronghold. Despite the odds, I'd bet the clones felt more at home after having recently killed Jedi and now having to occupy former Separatist and non-Separatist planets. During the infiltration, Tani Amis is talking to wannabe governor Groton, and she tells him how Count Dooku was right, that he saw the coming of the Empire from what was a corrupt republic. This makes me wonder, in an alternate world where Palpatine wasn't controlling everything from the shadows, would Dooku still have abandoned the Jedi Order and established the Confederacy? Would he have won the war? Crosshair and Cody end up making it to the tower stairwell after Trooper Nova's death and have to fight commando droids as they climb the flight of stairs. Now, Crosshair seems to be in his element this entire mission, even feeling comfortable enough to occasionally give orders despite Cody being the commanding officer. But there is one moment where he's getting choked out by a commando droid and calls for Cody's help. Showing that, as good as he is, he still needs to get more used to working without the Bad Batch. Of course I say that, but then he takes out the tactical droid with a trick shot using mirrors that Bullseye would be proud of. The fight is over and Tani Ames is holding Gron at gunpoint telling Cody that she won't surrender until the Empire leaves the planet and acknowledges the planet's sovereignty. Cody attempts to negotiate and uses the unfortunate line, the Empire seeks to establish peace and order to the galaxy, to which Tani responds by referencing a joint attempt at a peace treaty between the Republic and the Confederacy that was rejected by Supreme Chancellor Palpatine during the war. If you don't know what she's talking about, watch the Clone Wars episodes Heroes on Both Sides and Pursuit of Peace. Cody promises Tani a peaceful resolution, but as soon as she lets Groton go, Groton orders Cody to kill her. Cody, wanting to keep his word, hesitates, but Crosshair doesn't. That guy is stone cold. I always thought of Cody as a stickler for orders, 
But if there is one clone who I believe best embodies the phrase, good soldiers follow orders, it's Crosshair. With the old governor dead, Groton takes over, and what do you know? The Empire occupies the planet, its citizens are taken into custody, and their resources are confiscated. If you thought Cody was questioning orders before, he really starts reconsidering his life choices after seeing a shuttle full of conscripted recruits land and gets a smug look from Groton. Which has to be an enormous kick in the balls. Here's a guy who always follows orders and has to watch as he and his brothers are replaced by less effective troops. Back on Coruscant, Cody asks Crosshair if he thinks they're making the galaxy a better place. After Crosshair answers with, we're soldiers, we do what we're told, Cody says, you know what makes us different from battle droids? We make our own decisions, our own choices, and we have to live with them too. This is ironic because if I remember correctly, Cody was canonically the first clone to execute Order 66, a programmed order. Now, just like in the finale of Season 1 with Hunter, I believe Crosshair takes Cody's words to heart. Presumably the next day, Crosshair is summoned to Vice Admiral's Rampart's office for another mission, but this time it will be under a new commander, as apparently Cody has gone AWOL. Crosshair responds with his typical stoic expression, but I was genuinely surprised. Sure, we saw Cody question the motives of the Empire, but he's always been a guy who did what he was told. So after watching that episode, I just thought, damn, Star Wars hasn't been this good in a while. The score is perfect. We get multi-layered storytelling with genuine emotional impact. It's telling a very human story in a way that doesn't deprive this fictional universe of its more fantastical elements while doing so. I mean, we're talking about a clone army that used to serve alongside space wizards. The story sees an army of engineered men being forced to reconcile with a new world they're presented. They remember, in many cases with fondness, serving alongside the Jedi, but also remember that they were forced to kill them. They were convinced that they aren't just tools because they have the ability to choose, and yet they also have programming, which they practically have no choice but to follow. They've spent years serving in a war for a republic that not only has ceased to exist, but has turned into something that no longer needs them. We've heard the phrase, good soldiers follow orders, quite a bit in the Bad Batch as well as the Clone Wars. But I don't think that what that statement means has been presented in the way that it was with the dichotomy between Cody and Crosshair. Cody being a commander and a leader, well respected and with plenty of skill that served him well in his position as second in a command to General Kenobi. His loyalty and sense of duty to the Republic were nearly unmatched and he had no sympathy for traitors. Yet, being forced to betray his general and realizing what the Clone Wars led to has caused Cody to abandon his brethren. On the other side, you have Crosshair, a member of the defective Clone Force 99. Constantly stoic, neither cocky nor humble, but simply accepting of his incredible skill as a sniper. While formerly being part of a squad of clones that was well known for their unorthodox tactics and not always following orders, Crosshair has found himself obeying orders to a T and serving alongside not only regs, but human conscripts. The contradictions demonstrated in the stories of these two characters have shown us just how far the programming has pushed some of these clones and how a thing as small as a chip changed the fate of the galaxy. As I said, I really enjoyed this episode. The infiltration mission was fun to watch and cements my belief that this show is better when Omega isn't in it. But let me know your opinion in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss out on a new video. I'll see you all next time.